The word of God is like a signal on a hill, a lighthouse lighting your way through the darkness of sin, death, hell, and destruction, leading you to the safe harbor of the Father's loving arms through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Wendelin Galloway, copyright 1996. Hello, my name is Wendelin Galloway of Wendelin Galloway Ministries Incorporated, founded in 1996. Today, we're going to talk about Ruth and Naomi. Ruth and Naomi. Ruth, chapter 1, verse 1. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, so a man from Bethlehem in Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malon and Kilion. They were Ephrites from Bethlehem, Judah, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Malon and Kilion also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. In this text of Ruth, I, rather than me read you the entire chapter or the entire book of Ruth, you can read it for yourself. And it has amazed me because I'm a mother-in-law and I have two sons, and I have two daughter-in-laws. And in the text, it does not tell you what exactly Ruth, her daughter-in-law, saw up in that house. But we're talking about real husbands and wives, Naomi and her husband Elimelech, and Orpah and Ruth married to their you know, Ruth's married to Naomi and Emelech's two sons. And all of the men died. Now, I can just say this. We know there was some sin there for this to happen like this, but it doesn't tell you uh, exactly in details what happened. But we do know that these three women ended up widows. It's not like today where a woman can go out and get one full-time job and a part-time job these women were left destitute. Naomi, in her brokenheartedness, told her daughter-in-laws, I have no more sons. I have nothing to give you. Go back to your own people, to your own families. Orpa turned around and she said, adios, goodbye. She went on back to Moab to her own people. And there's a story there for her that we'll have to talk about another time. But Ruth said some of the most famous words in the Bible. She said, wherever thou goest, speaking to her mother-in-law Naomi, I goest, your people will be my people and your God will be my God and nothing will separate us but death. And Naomi pleaded with her to go and she clung to her. She clung to her. She would not let her go. So here you've got an older woman with a still young, beautiful daughter-in-law walking back to Bethlehem. Anything could have happened to them. They could have been, talk about human trafficking. They could have been kidnapped. They could have been molested, robbed, of which they really, they had nothing. That's why they were going back. And then as, as Naomi was approaching Bethlehem, from afar, there were people in Bethlehem that still remembered Naomi and they could recognize her even at a distance. And it's like, yo, Naomi. And she called back and she said, I left full, but I have come back empty. Meaning she had a husband and two sons when she left, even if they, they left because there was a famine in Bethlehem. But she came back. She felt empty. And through the course of the story, Naomi encourages Ruth to go and work 
in the fields. They left the four corners of the field for poor people. So whatever they could gather up, whatever grain they could gather up, they could take that home and grind it up, be it wheat or barley, and they could make flour and have bread to eat. This young, beautiful girl did that day after day after day, bringing what she could bring back to her mother-in-law to make a little bread for them so that they would not starve to death. One day, she finds out that the field she's working in is owned by a wealthy man named Boaz, and Boaz did his homework. And when he met Ruth, he said, all of Israel knows that you are a virtuous woman and you treat your mother-in-law better than seven sons. It might be 10. I can't remember the number, but it's a large number. And he encouraged her, don't go to any other field. You work in this field. And I have instructed my men not to molest you in the field and he t- also told them to leave extra sheaves and, and, and grain, drop things on purpose so that she could get it to feed her mother-in-law and herself. He also noted that she did not go after young men or older men. She was a virtuous woman. She wasn't interested. She was only interested in feeding her and her mother-in-law. When Naomi found out that she was in Boaz's field, she remembered that Boaz was related to her late husband. And they sat together and talked, and she told her he's a kinsman. In our uh, culture, we don't understand what kinsman redeemer is, but he was a type of Christ because Christ came and redeemed us, the entire world. Whether you believe in him or not, he has redeemed you from sin. And if you believe in him and you ask for forgiveness, he will not only forgive you, he will restore you and bring you into a good place, a large place. And this pagan girl, Ruth, found that out because her mother-in-law told her the men are going to be I think winnowing barley tonight excuse me and she told her to dress herself wash put on her veil and find Boaz and go and lay at his feet and the man will know what to do and when he awakened and she told her, don't don't do this until after the men have eaten. You know, men who work physically hard and they did, they um, food is a really big deal to them. Let me say that. And a cool glass of, of wine is a really big deal. And it's better even today after they've had a good meal and rested if you're going to talk to them about something serious. And through the course of the story, and I encourage you to read the entire book of Ruth, Boaz decides that he's going to make an attempt by talking to another nearer relative to see if he wanted to take on the responsibility of Naomi and Ruth which is also any land that Elimelech owned, he would have to take on the responsibility of all of that. And the other, the other uh, kinsman redeemer that was closer said, I can't do it. I have enough responsibility of my own. She goes back and she tells Naomi what Boaz has said. Boaz gives her, tells her to open her veil and he gives her all this grain. The scripture will tell you how much it was. It's like giving her money. But it was the grain that she was to take back to her mother-in-law. And when she told Naomi what Boaz had said, Naomi said, you be still because the man is going to finish it today. He's not going to wait. He's going to finish it today. 
And he found out the other man said, no, I can't take on any more responsibility. I think there's a ceremony of taking off one of your sandals and throwing it over your head or somewhere. You can read that in the text. But Boaz married Ruth. The woman who is the servant working in the field became the owner of the field through her husband. And they had a little boy named Obed. And Naomi was restored and redeemed and became Obed's nurse, where the women there sang and praised her, her blessings because they could see it also. She didn't have to die somewhere alone, impoverished, with no family or anyone around. The one of the reasons I brought this up is because I have not always had the best relationship with my daughter-in-laws that I love because they love my sons, especially my youngest son. He has an absolute uh, gem of a wife. And I had to apologize to her about two weeks ago and I told her, I said, you know, if I have been lax and not been the mother-in-law like Naomi to you, and like I said, it doesn't tell you in the text what went on up in that house. But whatever Ruth saw in Naomi, she decided, I'm not going back to my pagan people who do baby sacrifices and everything else that's wrong. I want to be with my mother-in-law. I want to be like her insofar as wherever she goes, I will go. Her people will be my people and her God will be my God. And to make a long story short, the genealogy is at the end of the book of Ruth. Ruth became the great, 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 great grandmother of Jesus Christ. And she was a great grandmother of King David. And I'm sure the faith that she learned from Naomi, she poured it into Obed, her and Boaz's baby. And that baby poured it into the next generation and the next generation and the next generation going all the way to Jesse. Jesse did not really care for David. And you have to go read the text to see that because he didn't even think of him as being important enough when the prophet said, God has sent me to your house. There's a king in this house and I'm supposed to anoint him. He brought all these big burly buff soldier like Sons in, and he's saying, the prophet said, no, no. Are you sure there isn't another son? Because I know God told me there's a king in this house. And he's like, well, yeah, uh, David, he's out there in the field with the sheep. He said, get him in here. Now, for years, I thought, and I'm almost 70, that David was a seventh son. He may very well be the seventh son. But Jesse had eight. And somehow, even uh, Jews in the Torah reading their, their, their Old Testament and we're reading our Old Testament, we fail to see that Jesse had eight sons. And for whatever his reason, he didn't even consider David. See, there's a scripture that says that God will put the solitary in a family. You listening to me, you may be the solitary in your family. You may be the one that can affect the salvation of everyone in your family. I don't care if you're young. I don't care how old you are. Because he picked you before the foundation of the world to make a difference in your family. And and, and it's, 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 it's beyond just your family. Many a day you can find in the scripture where God said 150 years after David had been dead and gone, he told the Jews, if it was not for your father, David, I would wipe you off the map. That means you no longer exist on earth, no part of you. But this is why David is called a man after God's own heart. And he affected an entire nation. There would be no no Israel today if it had not been the faithfulness of this one redheaded boy who became one of the most famous kings of Israel, him and his son Solomon. 
And I encourage you today, if you are broken from the loss of a husband, maybe the husband ran off, maybe he got sick and died. God has a plan and a purpose for your life and nothing that you've gone through in your life will go to waste. He is a God that restores. And you know why it's hard for you to believe that? Because we live in a society in a world where people lie, they cheat, they, uh, they don't keep promises, they break vows in marriage, they lie to their children, they lie to their mother. So you assume that God thinks the same way that you do, and I'm here to tell you he doesn't. He keeps his promises. And he keeps his promises even when you act a buffoon and you break yours. He keeps his promises. So be a blessing to yourself today. Go quietly, get your Bible, and read the entire book of Ruth. Because there are blessings in there for you and for your family that you can pass on that will go on. As long as we got a world and you got generations coming after you you can be a blessing to them. I thank you for your time and I will see you real soon. And God bless you. If you like this video, please subscribe and press the like button. If you would like to donate to the ministry, please send a check or money order to Wendeline Galloway Ministries, Inc. Post Office Box 1600, Bettendorf, Iowa, 52722.